Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, we will be reacting to host calls out Candice Owen. Get schooled instantly. Guys, let's get straight into this. In this classic interview with Crystal Ball and Buck Sexton, Candace Owens and Charlie Kirk sat down to discuss a conservative event for young African Americans they were soon to host. However, the conversation quickly burst into an argument when Ball crossed a racial line, like all liberals do. Hello and welcome back to Resist the Mainstream. I'm Steve Inman, reporting the news that the mainstream won't. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and of course hit that notification bell for more classic content like we're about to witness. Well, this was a while back, but it is a turning point uh, uh, for Candace Owen, in fact, and Charlie Kirk, obviously, with Turning Point, promoting their event in Washington, D.C. to bolster and promote young black conservatives. When rising host Crystal Ball began to ask increasingly baiting questions, the conversation started out very cordial, but quickly began to evolve into a political trap as Ball continued to push towards a debate about African-American conservatism. Can I just first ask, what is this event and uh, what, are, what are we going to be seeing the next couple of days here in D.C.? You know, we had received so much interest over a period of time in this sort of youth black conservative movement. It felt like we really wanted to harness the power and the opportunity um, and invite everyone to D.C. first and foremost to bring them to conservative ideas. A major hurdle that the black community faces is not having the resources to get to different ideas and sort of being locked inside of a bubble. Um, and having them listen to speakers that they perhaps haven't heard before, Dr. Ben Carson, Larry Elder, people who are routinely mocked in our community. Um, so this is the first ever opportunity to do that in D.C., and we're really excited that it's happening this weekend. In the past, the conversation was almost so intellectual that it was hard for people to digest and process and to understand. And because the left had won the culture war, it was easy for them to mock them, you know, to see a skit where perhaps Dr. Ben Carson or Dr. Condoleezza Rice are being mocked. Um, and I think I'm a little more of a fighter, um, definitely in terms of starting my, my channel on YouTube and wanting it to be colloquial and wanting it to feel familiar like you were talking to your brother and sister and sort of taking back some of the turf that was lost on the culture war by making fun of people on the left in the same way that they make fun of us. I think that that sort of helped bridge the gap and make people more interested in having the discussion. Does it bother you that there's no prominent African Americans in the White House? We have to stop believing in the solution that because somebody is black they represent my interests. Mm -hmm. um, we learned that lesson via Barack Obama. I mean he was in the, in the White House for eight years and didn't do much for the black community. So I'm not interested in the color of people's skin. So I'm interested in what they do yeah. and what they so accomplish. I'm, I'm really interested in your perspective here. Yeah. So to you having, like you don't look at you know, it is, it is an administration that has more white men than past administrations have had. Yeah, but that doesn't, that doesn't bother you? You don't think that diversity no, is no, important? No, not at all. I, I, I think that we have to stop believing that diversity is the color of people's skin because if you have, like, the Black Caucus, for example, which didn't stand up and applaud when uh, Trump announced that we had the lowest ever unemployment in the black community, that's concerning to me. So a big part of the conversation that we open is in making people understand that that's an illusion that the left has sold, that somehow because somebody matches my skin color, because somebody matches my gender, they have my best interests at heart. While Buck remained respectful and on topic in his questioning, Ball continued to rile Owens as the conversation turned towards racial diversity and representation in the White House. Ball directed her questions directly at Owens, expecting an outrageous response. But Owens was smart and remained frustrated, but calm as she began to reveal the host's true intentions. She's obviously a racist. In a tweet, you originally said you thought there was zero chance conservatives sent bombs. I think you took that tweet down. Yeah. But, but you later added, it isn't conservatives that are chasing people down in offices and restaurants. It isn't conservatives that have weaponized sexual assault as a means to political gain. I stand by my opinion that when it comes to political violence, the left is the likely culprit. That's correct, So we and we've seen that. I so mean, you, you think that it was look, it's, the it, left or Democrats who sent well, these I think, pipe Look, I, I think we're all entitled to have an opinion. We don't have any facts surrounding this, and Twitter is a venue where you're allowed to express your opinions and beliefs, and but just certainly... To be clear, so that's I, not based on any facts, that's oh, just your Of course, your it couldn't belief. possibly be based on facts. We don't have any any evidence other than the fact that they're investigating it, but... Well, I'll call uh, the Candace's uh, to I, I, Yeah, I, I do want to finish here. this by just saying that um, it is my belief, when you take, take a look at the conversation, the things that have gone on and the increasing violence that's gone on, it has purely been a leftist tactic to stall things, delay the administration, and to fear monger. So um, as a matter of opinion, I do believe that when we get to the resolution, the bottom of this, and we do have facts, we're going to see that this is orchestrated by the I mean, left. But I by could, no means could, is that opinion rooted in any proof because yeah. we don't have anything yet I mean, to I, go I off could of. Point, I could certainly point to Charlottesville. I could point to other acts that happen. I could point to Dylan Roof. I mean, there's certainly acts of but violence. 
houses that have really come then. Do you, conservative. But do you well, see how he, far back you have to go to do that? Ago. Charlottesville? The, yeah, yeah, that was, that's literally starting at the, at the beginning of his administration. But, Look at all that, of the but things that's that actually have gone not, on. I don't, I don't want to have this debate because ugliness can come from both no, sides. No, I'm just saying that you, you brought but it up. But I do, so do want to ask I, you, I though. I'm just answering the question. I mean, you've, you've got a big platform. I do. Right? And you have a powerful voice. Thank you. And kudos to you for creating that. Thank you. How do you view the responsibility that comes with that? I view the responsibility of just being a person that maintains my um, ability to have an opinion, that I express an opinion, and no means that I say that I have just found the facts and this is related. Yeah. Um, and I always you reserve the right. You said there's zero percent chance. Yeah. I said I'm going to go out and bombs. say that there is a zero percent chance that this was sent by conservatives. I find all of these, all the things that are going on, the caravan of illegals, the packages that are being sent, and you, Brett you Kavanaugh's think the confirmation. And, and just to clear, you think the caravan too was organized by Democrats? I find it Democrats. to be incredibly suspicious timing to so know that they are meant to, to get to the border um, at, you know, on the day of the election. Again, this is not rude in fact, but you do have to understand I am very much entitled to my opinion and Twitter is my sure. platform. Candace, I have one, I have, I have, I have one more. Just one more. Uh, just one more here. Because I, I, I did. I, I wanted to get to know you before you came on. Yeah. I'm really interested in your perspective For because sure. I think you're a fascinating person. Thank you. Once Ball began to bring up some of Owen's controversial tweets, the talk show turned into an all-out shouting fit. Kirk and Buck attempted to stop the argument before it escalated further. But Ball insisted on asking more baiting questions that she seemed to have a personal grievance with. White guilt. Is that what we're calling this? As the tension brewed further, Buck could be heard trying to reason with his co-host and clarify Owen's point but it was to no avail. Ball tried to remain poised. However, when Owen's response, she responded, she couldn't even help but interrupt and defend herself knowing she was in the wrong. Instead of backing off, Ball doubled down as the two engaged in a heated conflict till the network had to cut the interview as seen here. There was another tweet that said, the Democratic Party is comprised of racist white liberals. That is correct. Am I a racist white liberal? Well, let's go back um, and, and, and let's say, I will say this, that many people in the party don't, are not aware of their own racism. Let's go back to an early part of this conversation where you said to me, are you concerned about the color in the White House? Um, why, why would you ask me that question? Because you speak about black issues. No, but, but, but why would you, why would you ask me? The, but let's it. get to really the nucleus of this. Why did you ask me that question today? Because I'm Why did you feel that I needed to be concerned about that? Because you, you're bringing a whole group of young African-American okay. leaders to the White okay. House. Okay, so this is something that I talk about often, is that in many ways, what liberals don't realize that you, you put on that, the racism and the, the conversations that so we you're, have So you're are, saying I'm a racist. You haven't let me finish my statement. You keep okay. cutting me off. Go ahead. Okay? The emphasis that you place is always on having a discussion about race. Okay? You guys are insistent on having a conversation about race and telling us that we should see and implying that we should see race everywhere, and I don't agree with that. If you don't look at me according to the color of my skin, you would simply ask me how I thought that Trump was doing as a president. But instead, you try to drum up a conversation that's surrounded by race but by it, asking me, "Are there enough black people in the White House?" You're bringing a whole group of young black leaders you to the White color, House. You see color, I don't. That's something that's important to you. But why are you talking but about? But then why is it, why why make it a little, that you're going to bring young black leaders to the White House? I mean, this is because sort of absurd. Because, because the media, as in the this whole, is absurd. this is absurd. You're bringing this group to the White it's, House. It's not absurd. I'm making so, perfect so, sense. I just want to be. I just want to be clear. Yeah. I just want to be clear. I'm trying to be extremely clear with you. I know. I know. Bringing the black think, conservatives but to you the White me House as a racist white liberal. I think liberal. that you're not. A, first off, you put those words in my mouth, and you keep saying no, you it. So you I'm not. It. I, I said that the Democrat Party is comprised of racist white liberals. Are, are, is every person in the party racist? No, but you're not aware of the fact that you put these racist tones out into the media. This is why we have to bring the black conservatives to the president because you create a narrative when you're on TV like you did today. Do you are you that, comfortable okay, with? I'm going to have that, you on radio later because I have questions for you. I have questions for you as well. But we actually have to get out of the segment now. Which is helpful, though. I mean, just in terms of the national you, conversation. I, well, I because ask I, you, do you think I it's have, helpful to ask me just because I'm a black woman if I'm comfortable with the amount of color that's on the administration? Do you think that that's helpful? I think it's helpful and interesting to it's know not, your perspective. It's not. It's you just trying to I'm create an undertone that Donald You're Trump bringing, is racist, and no, it's wrong. No, no. Yeah. Okay. But listen, but is the reason listen, why. Listen, no, 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 no. We actually, I just want to say. I just want to say. You're looking at me on the basis of my skin color and making a bunch of, you know, and making a bunch of deductions. I did not. Remember you said party that, party. and we can run the tape but back. I, I, I want to say, look, here's what I want to say. You quoted a tweet, and then you made it about I you. I appreciate so.
you were not added, but you were not added in that tweet. So do not say I'm that I Democrat. called you that because that's dishonest. And we are on, and we are, and liberals, we are on TV, so you can run. You're calling me racist. Okay, so you're. I did not call you racist. You're you're using the typical leftist tactic of trying to make yourself a victim, which is not what I want to say. No, no, but we're actually we're actually well beyond that. Well, she's making herself a victim and pretending that I came here and called her racist. So this is a typical leftist tactic. You know, it's an unfortunate situation we're all too familiar with when a host or interviewer knows they have crossed a line and they're presented with two decisions, retract or double down. And in this case, Ball mistakenly chose the latter and paid for it on live television. Instead of questioning herself as a curious questioner, she unveiled a political agenda lined with personal issues and repressed guilt. White guilt is what they call it. Liberal white guilt. I know I don't have white guilt, and I know you don't. <laughs> Ball treated Owens like a child until the very end and refused to correct herself or apologize as she framed questions based around African Americans and racial issues directly at Owens. To her disappointment, she portrayed herself as a privileged white liberal, which ironically placed her perfectly into the context of Owens' tweet. Yeah. Bravo. Once again, this is Resist the Mainstream. Let us know your thoughts. Guys, this was actually an amazing debate, and I believe it was fun. It was fun, but like, I feel Owen was right because like she was the one trying to call herself a racist, and she was the one trying to ask questions that, you know, we that questions are not supposed to be asked. We all know, but like, don't ask this kind of questions. And she trying to say Owen called her racist is just fucked up. Like to be honest, you don't do that. Like we are on live, like everyone can see you. When your colleague is telling you shit, do not call you racist, but you're still trying to claim that she did. But guys, this video was fun, guys. I don't know who commented this for me, but please recommend stuff like this for me, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.